All right, five o'clock, yeah, 503, um, January 16th, 2024, Capital Improvement Planning Committee meeting in Waitley. Um, and the first order of business on the agenda would be to organize the committee. In the past, we haven't organized the committee at all, really. And we've just sort of, I've just sort of read through and we've had open discussions. That still works for me. That sounds good to me. I notice on some of the forms, there seems to be some place where a CIPC chair signature is called for, but I've never known us to have to do that. So, yeah, I take it there is no reason why a chair needs to sign anything. I've been here seven years and we've gone through without a CIPC chair, whether we've done it right or wrong. Okay. Let's proceed. Uh, um, so approval of meeting minutes from March 1st, 2023. If anybody can remember back that far. <laughs> I read through them. I thought they looked complete and succinct. So I would move to approve the meeting minutes. All right. <clears throat> All right. It's been a motion in a second. Um, we'll have to do a roll call vote. Um, Brent? Yes. Nicholas? Yes. Dan? Yes. Uh, Fred? Yes. And I assume Beth, you're going to abstain. Because you yeah. Went on the committee. All right. All right. And one abstention. Oh, and Darcy. She's being real quiet. She knows she's muted. That's often the problem. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Meeting minutes are approved. Next order of business review and discuss capital project proposed for funding in fiscal year 2025 and future years. So, just to make sure I understand, historically, when we've done this, it's been usually two of these meetings where we have a first discussion, we generate questions, and then we have a follow up. So, we're not, there's no expectation we're going to make voting decisions tonight. Is that everyone on the same page about that? Yep. Yes. Yep. And then we can also decide if we want to visit any of these spectacular locations. Yes. Um, between this meeting and the whatever whenever the second meeting is. Very good. Um so I'll you know I'll just start going through if we want. Um, and whoever has questions, I'll just give a quick summary of, of what I understand the project to be. If there's questions, then we'll load them down and I'll reach out to the folks who submitted the project. And just really, really quickly, um, I did include the regional uh, capital project request that, that we received. In the past, we haven't included these, but I wanted to have these just for informational purposes in case we had any questions or had any comments. Normally, they go straight to finance committee. Typically, we will we would see these as part of the, the the budget submission of the organization. Like when SCAM submits their budget to us, they'll have an operating budget and the capital budget, and that's really the first time we learn of of what their projects are. But um, I think it's good to at least have some transparency and have them out in the open and have discussions about them before they get the findings. Good. So that we won't have to prioritize. We'll just uh, give our okay on it once we go through it. Yeah, I don't think we necessarily need to prioritize those. Right. Um, all right, now capital projects. And several of these, um, some of these were submitted for CPA funding, and I've included the CPA applications uh, in this packet. The reason being is, let's just say, on the off chance that CPC says, no, thank you. And then, you know, we would at least have a rating from the CIPC to, to provide to the finance committee. Um, but again, we're, our decision making here is agnostic to funding. Right. Yeah. But that's why you'll see some different forms of uh, the applications or forms of the material. Um, all right, first one um, install double lane batting cages at Hurley Heath Fields. Um, it is what it sounds like there was. Um, old batting cages that were between the parking lot and the well, the pavilion or snack shack, and those were taken down, and they were in pretty poor shape when uh, we 
did the uh, parking lot renovations and the, the restroom renovations at Hurley. And the hope was is that they would be um, reinstalled, well, the new ones would be reinstalled somewhere else on Hurley Field. Um, so again, that's the, the structure that supports the net, that's the turf, that's mm -hmm. the, the whatever groundwork needs to be done to level it and install those install the diving cages. So at present there are no diving cages. I believe, yes, it was it was taken down. I don't believe they moved them. So there's nothing that um, athletes can do for batting practice at Hurley Field in the absence of that without just knocking balls all over the place. That's my understanding, yeah. Because I think one of my major questions was what will happen if this is not funded and it seems like it's to restore a facility that was there, that was present and is no longer present as opposed to replace a worn, because I think my reading of this, it says, you know, blah, blah, blah. The old batting cage was taken down, is well worn and no longer a usable option. Thanks so for you just said. Yeah, so it we cannot be put back. took it out through the driveway. Yep. It's no use. Okay. Okay. I have another question. Uh, any questions about that? If I, I remember correctly, that was first floated last year and got hung up at CPC somehow with an, I don't know, there was a problem with the application or something. So it's been over a year that this has been out there. Last year, the cost estimate was 12000 And this year, the request is for twenty two. I didn't really see a summary of the expenses in here. There's all these cut sheets of the products, but not uh, not uh, a tally of how we get to get to 22. Maybe somebody else knows that information. That's true. I only see the turf now or something. <laughs> It's 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 a it's obscure as far as I can tell. Because the original was twelve thousand. Yep. And that was withdrawn by the athletic or by the uh, field because they were applying for CPA. So the CPA got turned down. I, I believe last year. I don't comment this, but I think they missed the deadline for applying. Last year, for the yeah, yeah, I think that I think that was the problem. That e either the application was incomplete or not filed in time, or something. So has it been resubmitted for this year? Yes. Yes. Okay. I do like the quote. It says weekly. Yeah, I I, I can't hold it against them. They don't know us from anything, right? <laughs> but <clears throat> the weekly recreation. If I add all these up, it's over twenty-two thousand. But yeah, that includes because the the, uh... the artificial turf. There's two different quotes for artificial turf. I think that's the thing. There's there's the used turf for thirty-one fifty. There's the one from On Deck Sports that's five hundred dollars more. Yeah, eleven. So, so the twelve hundred originally went up to seventeen hundred, and now now they want to add the turf to it. That's Where nice. do you see the seventeen hundred? Because when I see it, uh, That's the, the first page where the picture is of the batting. I know. Yeah, it's eleven thousand five hundred. That's. Yeah, I see eleven thousand five hundred oh. for the batting. Case. Yeah. Okay, seven hundred. Yeah. And the, and the quote up above is what I'm looking at. Yeah, 11,500. Well, I guess I would say it'd be, it'd be nice to have um, like a more complete yeah. accounting of the of what the expenses are. Uh, and I'd be curious why it went from the 12 to the 22. But uh, that's a great question. I mean, even with everything that's happened in one year, that's a tremendous 
increase. Well, maybe a different product. Maybe well, the, the, the turf is being added to what I should see. So before when they did this last time, the turf wasn't needed. There were no cut sheets last year. Yeah. No. So we had no we didn't have specs. Yeah, yeah that's I suspect that's part of it. Oh. That yeah, the 12k was probably just the cage. Yeah, that that's my guess. It was just the cage. And then I maybe I think maybe somebody if I could guess somebody like Wayne said it's not just the cage. Mm -hmm. Would be my guess. Well, let's find out. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? So it's clear what we're asking for. We're looking for details. I'd be glad to know why the increase from twelve k to twenty k. Yeah. 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 Good. Um, next one, uh, Yellow Cemetery Tobacco Barn Restoration, otherwise known as Yellow Barn Repairs. Um, so this is work on the Yellow Barn that is adjacent to the um, Center Cemetery. Everybody knows where that is. If you're facing the Center Cemetery, it's immediately to the left. The town currently uses that as uh, a storage area uh, for, for storage, pretty much, for um highway equipment and i'm not sure if darcy i don't know if darcy you might have a little bit of equipment in there but um yeah so actually nicholas can probably do a better job explaining this than i can but essentially the sill on the north there's north there's two side. sections of sill that need to be replaced yeah so my understanding is that this was needed to the town and the barn is to remain standing on until a time where it is needed, so the space is needed for cemetery purposes. So right now it's it's, it's a town storage area mm -hmm. in the center of town. We don't have any other places to store. Well, <laughs> well, center school, but um, we don't have any place to really store other equipment in the center of town. And we have limited space at the highway garage as well. Um, so it, this is- I uh, think that's a cheap price. That Keep it because we got to keep it. There's no doubt about it. Can you comment on the overall structural integrity of the barn? Oh, it's an old building, but um, it's all peg and mortar, right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's, so it's, it's supposed it's to be. Uh, it's not. It's not going anywhere. Okay. In the near future, so those don't fall down. Understand if, if the roof is maintained. <clears throat> and I, I can't remember when the roof was redone, so okay. I can't comment on that. Okay. Uh, for this particular project. What's what, if any, is the relationship to the structural integrity of the building? Is this based on oh, that significant? If this doesn't get done, it's just going to keep collapsing in the so in that floor. Floor. Uh, the sill, the sill is the bottom piece that holds it up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it probably would stand up for another 15 years, but it, it will it's it, going to fall on my grave, so let's get it done. My <laughs> grave is right next, and I don't want to fall on that. Okay, <laughs> priority A. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like we've got a lot of a lot of vested interest in this particular project. Well, yeah, right. I mean the thrust of the question is in discriminating the different priority levels yeah. is I'm trying to get a sense of urgency, right? You know, is it going to collapse? <clears throat> is it at, you know how how great a risk of um let's say catastrophic failure of the building mm. is are we facing here? We're, we're not discussing that tonight. We're reviewing. No, I, I know. Well, let's not get into it. So we have a long ways to go. Yes. And you, you, you look at last year's spreadsheet and you'll see what's forecast for the coming years. So it, what I'm trying to do is ask questions tonight that if we don't have answers here, we'll get answers to them for our deliberations. I'm not just, I understand we're not trying to deliberate tonight. And so I think because we have you and your right to know the structure of the building, we can address these questions about urgency. Okay. Uh, I would say that it's not going to fall down in the next year. On the other hand, it is getting worse. And if the rot spreads, there'll be more sure. more repairs that need to be done. Understood. Yeah. So it's pay now or pay more. Totally you know, it's wood, not going to heal. Wood doesn't heal. No. It's yeah. not going to heal. It gets worse. Okay. All right. Any other questions on the yellow cemetery tobacco farm? No. 
Next project, elementary school installation of electrical sub panels. So this was submitted. Um, well, we just back up a little bit. Um, but Fred, Baron, and I had a meeting with Bill Hilter at the elementary school to talk about um, really the the air conditioning project because mm -hmm. <clears throat> this has really been the second year that it's come before us and. You know, I think if they both <clears throat> the committee felt that it didn't really have enough information mm -hmm. to, to to make a recommendation. Um, so we tried to impress upon them the need for the information that we were looking for um, in terms of more of a comprehensive look at what are they planning to do with the entire HVAC system, um, with to the boilers, with the mini splits. Talking to the building management system, those types of we're trying to get answers to those types of questions. So at that meeting, we found out pretty much what was stated here. Um, and the, I, for me, the big surprise was this this need for um, additional power sub panels to be installed in the school to support the additional mini splits beyond what was currently installed because that was. That's not something that had been discussed about. That's not something that had been discussed or maybe even known um, prior to that. Um, so this is due to the significant increased electrical demands of all of these systems. Right. Right. It, it wouldn't. So this is a uh, in order in order for in order for the additional how many are eleven mini split heat pumps to be installed. There needs to be these mm -hmm. these electrical breaks. You need the room in the panel in order to install any of the wiring for it. Um, so that was a surprise, but it, it, it is what it is. Um, and then, so what we have, what was submitted was this HVAC three year plan. Um, that was in the main packet. And so for the upcoming year, the request was for the um, additional power sub panels uh, that I think are going to be installed in the attic. And then to install six additional mini split heat pumps to the classrooms and connect them to the um, CTC BMS, which is the, the building management system. One of the con previous concerns of uh, of the committee was whether the whether these would be connected to the, the building management system or would we have systems working in uh, against each other in terms of trying to keep the the temperature mm -hmm. what it was set at within the room um and the boiler system is currently on the building management system yeah 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 really it, it it was just the i mean prior to and, and right now it is just the boiler that's on the building management system the existing mini splits as i understand it are not I see. part of the building management system um but it seemed to make sense to to have them all managed by the single program. Mm -hmm. um, Bill was able to get um, CTC, it's, uh, was it connect controls through something? Yeah, I, I forget what the acronym is. Um, but their, their representative was there who, who works for the company and they said, yeah, it's, it's um, something that can be done. And it gave a very complicated explanation about BACnet. <laughs> about how it's, all these systems are universal and can talk with each other and it, I don't know it was over my head but you're I thinking the town hall the whole time probably <laughs> but yeah. if I can I subsequently asked Bill would that management system be sufficient and could it handle all of the mini splits and the boiler and everything else we want to do and he said yes that it, it could integrate all of the different elements uh, which was the answer we wanted last year. Right. Uh, and did you guys discuss at all the issue that we talked about last year at our site visit of um, what sort of savings might materialize from using the mini splits as a heat source instead of the central boiler uh, was that kind of. I mean, maybe with only half of the classrooms done, they they can't actually use them for heating effectively. We we, we asked them about it. The central boiler will still be required. You can't that the 
mini splits, particularly in extremely cold weather, simply are not sufficient. But well, how about that. in the in, in the like the, the bridge weather um, when the mini splits could be effective? Will they be able to be used for heat to to replace the the boiler, or will the boiler have to be on because half the classroom is still need heat? Well, I think it has to be on. on, on I would say the boiler stays on. They just yeah. turn the boiler yeah. thermostat. Uh, you're running two systems. You don't turn both thermostats up. You run the mini splits, you're turning on the boiler. So it doesn't run. That's all. And then that's what hopefully the building control system should, yeah. should manage. Once all of them are installed. That's once once everything's installed and hooked in, one yeah. would think that in moderate weather, the boiler would be at, you know, on but not pumping out much heat, and the mini splits would do the bulk of the work. Is that boiler? Again, that, that's that's why you get the management system to to integrate those things. Is that boiler set up as a uh, multi uh, zone zone building? Yeah, I want to say it's only two. I want so to it's the two wings of the school. I want to say that. So maybe even starting year one after the <clears throat> splits go in, because they're going to go in on one wing, right? They're going to go in the upper wing. I thought that's what I saw on the on the on the plan. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. This, this is a small point I'm making. I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, you know. You got nice color on that one. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. the pink. Yeah, it's the upper wing. The upper wing. Mm -hmm. or whatever. That so if if that is zoned separately. They could be running while the boiler was heating the other parts of the school. Yeah. And it looks like the boiler is going up. There's no plan to deal with the stage, the gymnasium, the cafeteria, or the common hallway areas for heating or cool. So, or I guess that the, the mini splits will not solve those areas. So it seems like the boiler will be used for delivery of heat. Well, they will in the, in the, in your stepping seasons when you're going from one to the other. Yes. As long as it's not too cold, they work. We use them at the polar so we've had the, both systems running all the time. We just turn the thermostat down and run the mini splits until it gets cold enough uh -huh. where you need the heat, and then we turn on the other gas heat. You need a supplement or yeah. switch right back over the uh, gas. But I guess to Nicholas's point that if the green areas are the last ones, the uh, no, uh, this, this, yeah, you know, if those are what, if the, if the pink ones get put in, then yeah, I guess what we're saying is that until all the mini splits are in, the building is mostly going to rely on the boiler for heat. Because we don't have multi-zone capability, and you can't. You got you got more than one zone. Yeah, but can you control? Well, we don't know where the zones yeah. are. We yeah. don't we don't know where the zones are. That's right. Uh, and in his plan, he's hoping that in year two yeah. we fund the rest of them, correct? Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. Uh, yeah well, the, the timing is one of the ma major issues here. Because of the uh, the rebate issue, right, right, that uh, Bill is concerned that the rebates might go away, and that you know would fund forty percent of the units. Yeah. So that that's a decision we have to make is at what level to fund it, and mm -hmm. and when. No, uh, assuming there's a decision to fund these at all, but it, it gets very complicated because of that unknown. Right. But are there specific questions that we should ask, or maybe that's a school representative? I don't know if you want to add anything else. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think it's a good point um, to bring up the rebate because those are happening now and have been and other schools are taking advantage of that. 
So if we miss that window, you know, we're going to have to fund the whole thing. And, you know, you're talking about the heat component, which is very important. However, you have to think about the other end, the cooling as well. It not only is going to reduce the temperature in the classroom for students and teachers, but it's also going to preserve the classrooms. Because as you know, over time, when moisture builds up and all of that over the years, that's going to lead to decay in some of these classrooms. So it's preserving the classrooms on top of, you know, comfort for students and teachers. So I think that's so, another point that needed to be made. So there's a potential proposal here, not just to accelerate what they what was put here in the plan for FY26 into FY25 to capture these rebates. Am I hearing that right? Correct. Yes, but th there's another factor involved, which Bill informed me of. If the request goes over $100,000, then a different uh, le level of... Brian, you can help with this, that <laughs> there are other state regulations that kick in. That, that help the town or make it more complicated? That make it more complicated. Yeah, I, I think it relates to the, the there's a hundred thousand dollar threshold for which you can use a, an alternative procurement process. If it's under mm -hmm. a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. Okay. Yeah. So, so trying to do everything at once, it doesn't necessarily mean we can't do it, but it makes it more complicated with the electrical and the actual units. We'll kick it over a hundred thousand dollars. It, it, some of it would come back to us in the rebate some of it which would bring the total project cost back under 100 but it's the initial outlay cost that is controlling maybe one question i had was were more than one vendor quote obtained like, you know, we're seeing one set of quotes. So did they collect a bunch of quotes and this is their recommendation? And if so I'm just curious what, be curious what the range of quotes were. You know, if, if we're it, uh, I believe that these were just as estimates, not as, since it's not a, uh, it's not out for bid yet. There were no competing quotes because they're not quotes, they're just estimates. Okay. Yeah, and they mentioned that they're they're on the uh, they're on a state they're on a statewide contract, which there's a different procurement process if there's a statewide contract oh, sure. called by vendors. So yeah, it may it may be that they don't. The theory is that this that the state did the competitive bidding when they put together the yes. list. Understood. So um, they may not need to get three quotes before okay. that. People going, mm -hmm. especially if it's under the other dots. Um, do we have so do we want to have any specific questions? Um, also. The um as far as the I'm not sure it's really our word, but the hundred thousand dollars threshold, it is that the mini splits plus the electrical work or those sort of are those two separate quotes so they don't they're not additive in this case. I I think it would have to be for the whole project. But even so, if we if we wanted to try to get a jump on the rebates and put the FY26 splits into this year, that would kick over 100000 anyway. Without... But we're, not, we're not over 100000 with the first six plus the electric? I, th I think that for this purpose, the electric and the units can be separated. Okay. All right. Just, uh, just no for, this. This is my reading into what Bill said about the splits kicking it over. Okay. Yeah. Because it's clear that we are over 100k, adding those two separate projects right there. Right. right. But there. I think that they would be coming probably because they would be coming from different vendors. I see. Right. Okay. That, that it would, could be considered two different projects. 
Okay. Uh, this may just come down to an issue of finding out more about that threshold, how much it would increase the cost of the project, and then beyond this committee, when we get to budget, just figuring out how much might be, you know, we can make available for this this project, and then whether it's feasible and desirable to try to do it all at once, or to split it back into twenty five and twenty six. I think it's still just a plan for two years, but we probably have to vote on the whole package to start. Well, I mean, the theoretically, we wouldn't have to do all of the splits. You know, we wouldn't have to do all eleven or whatever it is. No. Um, that it's not it's not like one project that has are, two components. It's just okay. We want to do these six and then those five. The only thing you have to do up front is set electrical, and then the minis can be put in individually. That right, but the, then but. The other complicated we, factor we get back to is the rebate issue, and how yeah. fast we need we want to act to try to lock that in. It's it's a complicated issue. Yeah. I'd say let's move on to the next yep. item. Let's go, Flooring. Flooring. Uh, replace the coat base and tile bathroom floors with a seamless, seamless urethane flake floor. We, no, we saw those floors on the tour last year. They were in bad shape. They are yep. benched, and there was a drain clog issue. So, which raised for me a question of whatever happened with that. They did that. They redid that bathroom. Oh, that was done many years ago. No, that's, that that's that was, over the hill. That's gone. Forget it. <laughs> Well, that raised costs if there was a there was a potential significant capital cost associated with opening up those drains or dealing with yeah, that. Yeah. So maybe those. I, partly the question is: Does that same issue apply in these bathrooms? And two, how does this proposed plan? How is it similar or different from what they did in the ones they just completed in F in twenty twenty three? Well, I don't know that I saw the same plan. I think this is for the bathroom that we looked at down the hallway. This is that we is did. It? They say they did the one with the, the one with the, the the drains that are plugged up. I think this they didn't do that one already. I don't believe. Okay, that was then. Then I'm misunderstanding because they do reference two that were done in 2023 and the current and last that I thought were done. Last year were the, the pre-K bathrooms. That was the floor replacement for last year. Yeah. Uh, but we toured, we toured the, uh, the big bathroom. The big bathroom over by the art music across from the library. Yeah. And that's where the, the drain issue was. Yeah, there. That's where they talked and about it. I believe that's the one we're talking about now. Yeah, I think and it's the one that backs on the gym. Yeah, it's that big bathroom by the gym. Are you saying there, did you say there was a drain issue in that pre-K classroom? Or you talking there's, a, there's a drain in that bathroom floor that got filled with something like concrete a number of years ago. Yeah, and there's a certain question mark around whether it should be cleared out before the floor gets replaced or whether- It's already been blocked out when the floor was replaced. It's under the floor now. When it's, they did this last one, they said that was capped over. And there's stuff in it. That's why it isn't. In, that's why they found a dip there. And it's not in use. That was not my understanding. My understanding it it was it was I would say improperly filled that drain, and they would like to restore that drain because it makes the bathroom floor easier to clean to have a working drain there. And so I remember that as part of taking up and replacing that bathroom floor, they were going to investigate what the issue was and whether it would be easy to reopen that drain and make it flow. How far that plug was. Yes. And so are we just dealing with that same bathroom again because that didn't get addressed 
So I'm a little confused about which bathroom we're talking about. Um, yeah, why, why don't we have them clarify exactly what what work on what bathroom we're looking at? Yeah, I haven't, uh, there haven't been any discussions about the drain in any of our meetings. So I will definitely take that to Darius. I, I, I would personally, as far as pri our job of prioritizing, I would just defer to, to them as far as do they think the bathroom drain is a resolved issue, something, <clears throat> something that should be dealt with before the, the floor gets replaced. I mean, and I, I presume I, it doesn't apply in these new ones, though. If this is a same or different. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm still just curious. My, my main question is, you know, in my mind, we've reviewed and approved other bathroom floor replacements in the past. My reading of this package says that during the current fiscal year, FY24, the pre-K and faculty bathroom floors were replaced. So is this plan we're now evaluating following the same plan in the same materials, or is it different materials and why? Or do we just not care they're, how they're going? It sounded to, to me like the same material that they were proposing last year. Yeah, I believe it's the same. It was a. Wait, wait, what did you say? We're the pre K and grade one? Pre K and faculty, I think. It says pre K year. in the package that we're looking at. So I'm looking at the well, page lower, 33. The lower right. Bottom line says in FY24, which is the current fiscal year, the pre K and faculty bathroom floors were replaced. Here's pre K. These bathrooms, which I believe means the ones that we're now looking at. Bathroom floors, phase two. Well, it'd be the smaller one because the bigger one is right next to the pre-K. That's one by the gym, floor. right? So, okay. And the one across the hall. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's just across the hall. So, and then this one, I believe, right? you got to be careful how they word it as to which one was done, which side of the hall. Yeah. You know? Just one's on one side, one's on the other. One is okay. two bays, the other one. Yeah, those are the ones we looked at. The pre-K and by the gym. So those have been done. And it was the one by the gym that had the drain issue. So that is over and done with. So but now it's the smaller one. The one by the gym is a big one. Well, we're looking at this. Maybe the, there's one there and one there. Okay, that's next to the pre-K. This says reading room 106. Is there a bathroom that, too? That's next to the pre-K. Where's the other bathroom you're talking about? Uh, the way over there. Yeah. So two that are shaded in, say. And, and then at least right here, also these the faculty bathrooms, right there. All right, where's the where's the gym floor? The so gym is right here. Well, that's the gym there. Okay. Yeah. So this was the it was the one on the corner. Yeah, that's the hallway that we looked at across the library. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it says these bathrooms are the lower and upper wing student bathroom. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think the, for the ones bathroom. by the gym, I think I think it, they're the ones. It's the one we looked at. Yeah, to see if we got into that long talk about the drain. Right, but they weren't replacing those last year. But I, I thought they. I my reading of this is that those shaded ones here on this diagram are the pre-K and faculty bathroom floors. Pre-K. Oh well, that's not really. That's not the faculty. The, right the faculty ones are are yeah are right here next to the faculty. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, and they're like small bathrooms for a single person to use. Got it. Yeah, it's one by the gym. So we think this one is the one by the gym that we talked about. Yeah, that's what we looked at. And that never got done in your belief, Dan. Not to, to this point, I guess. I'll ask. I would say instead of guessing, why don't we just ask exactly yeah. what what the proposal is? Yeah. So I'll ask: Is the drain issue resolved, and how do the other ones turn out? Yes. Essentially. Yeah. Because it's the yeah. same. Okay. And confirm. I mean, they refer to it as the bathrooms are the lower and upper wing student bathrooms. Would it be good to confirm it's one by the gym? I mean, it's like pretty yeah. obvious. There's not that many bathrooms. It's not that big a building, but yeah. Yeah, but on, on this 
floor plan, the one near the gym is shaded, which indicates work needs to be done. Let's Correct. see if the drain has been done before we go ahead with work. I missed that part on the key. Yeah. So the shaded ones oh. are the ones that are being proposed for FY and we're looking at now. And, and that's the pre-K and the one next to the gym. Okay. No, the pre-K are not shaded. They're those little ones. Well, no, the the, the two above, one next to the pre-K room. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, got it. So okay. now we get it. So those little ones down here okay. and these over here have already been done. Right. That's my dance. Okay. It's a pretty clear map, actually. Okay. There's only actually <laughs> once we look at it long enough. So maybe we don't know. Okay. Now we know what we're talking about. Right. right. Well, what's not clear is whether they've resolved the drain issue and whether it needs to be resolved before we do any further work. Right. Oh, what about the door? All right, doors. The doors seem important. They do seem important. Presumably, it's, it wasn't clear to me, but are there safety or security concerns associated with the deteriorated doors? Just having a direct answer to that. I didn't see that point addressed, but that raises the... We saw one of them there that the, the uh, yeah. sill and the door frame was rotted on already. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and metal rot will spread. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any questions? No. I was a little confused about, they said the ones on the north side, they've got nine doors labeled. I mean, I guess they're just asking for money for three of them, right? No, and yeah, they'll pick them out the first three years. They'll just decide which ones, right? Ceiling the brick. All right, we'll go with doors, no questions? Yeah. All right. Ceiling of library brick surfaces. Hmm. Suspended CPA application. This is the library similar. used to be white, I understand. Painted white. And then they was it sandblasted it. They sandblasted it. Sandblasted it, which removed any protective coating of the bricks. And it has been bare since I assume it's been bare since then. So they're looking to seal the exterior surface of the bricks. So there's only a one-year warranty. So I'm just sort of wondering, like, how, like, is this, does this need to be done on a periodic basis, annually, every five years, sort of like a, did anyone have a? I don't think it was done. Doesn't mean it ever been done, right? Well, I don't think it's ever been done. It's never been done, I remember. I've been on this for a long time, so. Yeah. Get it done. It seems like a really good idea. Yes. I'm, I'm happy to ask how long they, they think it's going to last. Does it hurt? If it has to be done on a regular basis, CPA won't continue to fund it because it would be considered maintenance, maintenance instead of <laughs> repairs for them. It provides long term protection according to this, the uh, cut sheet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> only one year warranty on the long term protection. <clears throat> So now we're on to the used truck for the cemetery commissioners. And we have a used one sitting in the town garage they can use. Well, that's, I think that's a conversation we'll have to have with, with yeah. Keith as well. Yeah, Keith and... has discouraged me from it, but I'm not opposed to it. I mean, for the amount you're going to use it, it's going to be parked right. half the year. Well, it's parked three months out of the year. I use it good these days a good nine months out of the year yeah, but yeah um, i don't 
I'm not looking for anything fantastic. I'm happy to take the used truck. He Keith just discouraged me when I talked to him about it, saying it needed a lot of work. <laughs> which truck is that? The blue one? Be... I'm un unsure which one. I just know that he had one he was retiring. And I asked about it and he said, You don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the one they retired from the water department for the town. Could be. Now we can retire to the cemetery where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> Last step. So, so the issue is that is that the cemetery commissioner, of, of which Darcy is one of them, um, has to transport lawn mowing equipment between the, the three cemeteries and. Up to black up till up until last year, right, Darcy? Um yep. Darcy used her own personal pickup truck to tow. Right. And I believe the, the cemetery commissioner slash town have a trailer. Um yeah. but now um Darcy, you, you told me that you got rid of your pickup truck or it it or, died. Yeah, <laughs> it, it it died. So I mean, should should cemetery commissioners really have to use their personal vehicles to do the work of the town is sort of the threshold question. And, um, and why are the cemetery commissioners who are not staffed doing this work? They and would it be are. they are they are yeah they are paid staff for yeah okay yep. it's a, it's a strange position where they're I considered see. sextants, which I guess are cemetery caretakers, and they're it's a paid okay it's an elected it's an elected oh elected right yeah Marcy? elected yep. yeah yep yep, yep. It's elected. So it's an elected paid position, and doing this kind of maintenance is in the job description. Right? Because the question would be, is it cheaper long term to just contract for this lawn mowing service? Or what you're saying is it's the job, it's part of the duty of the commissioners to perform this function. Yeah, I, I think the commissioners, will, it, it, it's within the commissioner's discretion to probably to do that, that cost analysis, but... I, I think it's such a yeah, it's, to to it's such a unique job where it mm -hmm. takes time. It's not just running a mower up and down. Yeah. I, I'm not even sure we could really find anybody. But yeah, it's uh, not cheaper. It's not cheaper, and to to date, we have not been able to find anybody willing to do it because it requires particular equipment to get between the narrow rows. So larger companies are not willing to run through the cemeteries. So this is a very specialized town service that requires equipment purchased and maintained by the town. Correct. Well, Doris, I know that you have been hoping to get out of the mowing business. And yes, <laughs> it doesn't seem like there's anyone in town leaping to, to fill your role. Uh, no. Which makes me circle back and think maybe we should be pursuing some sort of long, you know, grass company instead of. Well, as I else. just said, as I just said, we can't find anybody who's yeah. willing to do it. Yeah. We can't find anybody now. We've got a long one. Yeah. A little yeah. It, I mean, I'd be willing to circle back around again and see if they're willing to use the mower we have. Yeah, and, right. Yep. I mean, just in the past, we've not been able to find anybody, uh, but I can try again. It does not solve the problem for this spring unless we can find someone soon. Um, yeah, I mean, it's I can I can look again. I just like it, beyond that, like if we don't find anybody, I do I do not want to be forced to buy a truck. No, I'm not going to. Which means there will be no one to move the equipment. So. Yeah, the, the one thing I'm thinking about is. If it ever happens, if and when it happens, and I haven't talked to Keith about this, but Keith's, Keith's truck, Keith's red truck, the 2013 F-150 is scheduled for replacement. I don't know what his thoughts were for right for, for that truck. I don't know if, if he mentioned that at all, but um, it seems like one could shake loose, but if not, I think it would be terribly expensive. Yep. But there's certainly a need there. Yeah, I think there is a need unless they can find someone for the spring, a company to do it. Ready to move on. 
Any questions? Any other questions? No. No. Um, uh, replace air packs. I have a bunch of questions about this, Rick. There seem to be very little detail. One question being, how long will the new systems al allow the firefighters to work in hazardous conditions? So there's an implication, like we have existing systems, they let firefighters work in hazardous conditions for you know X amount of time, but that's not long enough. Yep. So I'd like to know how much longer are will this equipment um, allow? Um, it's not how much the equipment allows. We're talking about being mandated by state code. Well, that's how long you're making an inference there, Dan, about he says it's too compatible with surrounding communities, but I don't see language here that says this is a mandate that we have this kind no. of equipment. Where do you see that somewhere? No, no. So if this is mandated, it's a different story. But it's right now I'm here, I'm seeing this as um like how often are they likely to need this equipment? Yeah, this is some how many are required. There's no indication of how many air packs they currently have yeah. and how many they and and of the existing packs that only get them say one hour versus five hours. I'm just making up numbers here. You know, yeah. can they keep some of them and just supplement them, or do they have to just wholesale replace all of them? So I have a lot of that's yeah. that. Obviously, I want our firefighters to be able to have the equipment that they need to do their jobs. But this one seemed very thin on detail. I agree. Um, and I can ask this. Yeah. yeah. I can ask the new chief to provide additional information about it. They just recently submitted a grant application. <clears throat> and on Dan's point, if this is a mandate that they have this equipment, that would be good to know. For that I, I can ask, uh, I'll ask for a lot. Here, here's, are you looking at this one you're talking about? That's the only sheet, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot more information about the, the uh, turf for the batting cages. <laughs> this was this was a very other project a couple of years ago, so. It, we have we don't have additional information, yeah. so I'll, I'll make sure we get some. Yeah. If you look at the date on that project request, it was dated twenty twenty two, so it's not even a new request. I don't. It's I don't feel like I've seen it before. I, I don't know why we haven't seen it before, but it was I think it was submitted last year for a future year so we didn't spend too much time oh discussing. okay it, it was pre what so it was pre-submitted like we well like you to know, see yeah we like that but yeah we need much more updated information <coughs> I guess we'll yeah I, I think we can get ask the new chief for more detail on this yeah next one uh replace uh, 2013 F-150. So this is back to the electric. <laughs> so this gets, yep, this was something we saw last year. And now it's gone up by $35,000 from 50 to 85. And there's still this question about logistics, right? Like, how's it going to be charged? Where is it going to be? So if we acquire it, we garage it and keep it charged, or is, has that been accounted for? And have they got one that's working yet? So, right now, the there's a cyber truck, huh? so, so right now, there's uh, there's a consultant that's doing a, a EV fleet assessment or a fleet assessment to transition the, our gigantic fleet to uh, electric vehicles. I don't know. That's not done yet, but uh, it'll be done shortly. And I believe that Sylvie has specific recommendations related to the F one, related to this vehicle okay. replacement. Um, and I 
think there's some discussions about charging in there. Mm -hmm. um, the one issue that, that has come up and that in, in my mind has been resolved yet is is charging when in this might be more of a select board discussion, but charging when a when a department head has a vehicle at home. Uh, yeah. if, it, if it's required to be if it needs to be charged at home, mm -hmm. then how does the how does that work? Not only, I mean, yeah, it's easy. We can get a charger and install it at the house, yeah. but then how are we, how are we splitting costs and right. how, and what happens if somebody leaves, and what happens if somebody leaves, and then right, it, it's okay. Seems like it can be worked. Yeah. It can be worked out though. I mean, it's great that there's a consultant who yeah. might have some insight into how to make some of this work rather than every town inventing it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's part of a whole EV fleet, for lack of a better word, uh, transition that we're hoping to do uh, with the highway department vehicles, police vehicles, et cetera. And I, th I think that the charging issues will be worked out somehow when we have the whole looking at the big picture. Yeah. I have about this. No. Barrel post more. What well, sounds like attachment yeah, right. to mow around guardrail posts. I guess I just asked this one question. How much use is this equipment likely to get in a typical season? Cool. I bet a lot. You would grow up. Yeah. Probably Probably. On the road every, I, I bet you they get that on the road. Once the grass starts growing on the road. Covering the whole town probably twice a week, anyways. They use it different times, different parts of town. Does the ditches, besides the guard, you know, going over the rails and stuff? I, I don't know whether a park broke on this or to get over the rail. Well, they're indicating this, that they don't. This is, this, new piece of, this, is a, this is a new piece of equipment that specifically can dodge in and around the poles. Yeah. Right. It's different than the big. Uh, the so big thing that you're thinking of goes in the ditch. So it'll be an attachment to the, the, the track, the John Deere. Yeah. Still, so I think it's a reasonable question. Just get Pete to speak to that yeah. question. Uh, replace 2017 unmarked police cruiser. Yeah, I would like to know why an eight-year-old vehicle that gets 10,000 K miles per year is in need of replacement. I mean, I know it's a police cruiser. Maybe it's full bullets, but um, I don't know. Right now they have a cruiser they got in July of 2016. Is, is this typical of a police cruiser? Well, we're set up on the schedule to do them. Yeah, yeah. So many years. This one, this is this one was submitted in 2018. This proposal. Yeah. yeah so no, that, this is on sort of a standard replacement schedule rather than. I see. A new request. Yeah, so I, I yeah. think the unmarked is every seven years, which is the the, the chase car, and then the yeah. frontline cruiser. I think is every six years. I say programmed in. Um, so they have not received, so um, a replacement was approved for the frontline cruiser last year, I believe. Um, it was even the year before. It was the year um, before. They have not, they still have not yet received it. Oh. So it was a hybrid and then with all the stuff that happened with, with shortages and okay. um, and then the auto worker strike. And, they have still not received uh, the new frontline cruiser. Um, yeah, well, the, the frontline cruiser, the money was approved by town meeting. So that, that's not even a budget issue now. So this is an example of this, a fairly simple issue for this committee because it's sort of yeah. it's built in. It's, it's one of our normal upgrades yeah. like we do with the 
a lot of our other trucks. Yeah, but you will hear from, so there have been some structural changes in the police department. Um, it, because the long story short with police reform, it really phased out our ability to use part-time officers or the availability of part-time mm -hmm. police officers. So um, the town now has two full-time officers and one full-time chief. Yeah, um, and if, if there's going to be a push from the police chief to um, try to keep three car, keep three cruisers mm -hmm. um, running. Not, I mean, right now it's the two cruisers in the detail. So I'll say it's going to be three cruisers in the detail. Um, What's the detail? The detail car. It's usually the oldest car. It, it, it's the the vehicle that's most recently retired. Is reserved just as like a light bar. It's reserved for boxes of blue and details. The town collects the roadside details. The town collects a, you know, a cruiser fee. They collect an admin fee. So it essentially pays it pays for itself. But um, it, it's going to be a push for whatever cars. Probably that one of these cars not being replaced so that they would keep three on. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's coming. Mm -hmm. But that's not what's before us now. But yeah. um, electronic voting, I believe. This is the saddest one on here. <laughs> Can't believe we're going to go to electronic voting tabulator. Well, that's to be determined. So sad because of what it says about Waitley's growth. Just, I just love the wooden box and the oh. paper ballots and, you know. One more position to pay, just sit there and turn the crank. It's a good job. You can know how many times you're going to have to crank it, just about. <laughs> hmm. um. Well, another cross check. Add an eight count, see if it agrees with the tabulator. So I'm presuming that these machines will be used for not only state and federal, but town elections, which they want. Um, is there a, the, the write-up mentions programming for the March primaries. So is there this other cost that, well, I guess this is not a capital cost, but I'm curious about. There's additional budgeted costs associated with the acquisition of these for like periodic programming for all the different elections. I guess you don't have with the current system. It's just a wooden box that people try right. to crank. So it sounds like that's not relevant to our deliberation. Here. Yeah, the timing of this would, would be such that it, it would not be available for a bunch of others. No. Because this would be this would be something that would be taken to town meeting. So right. oh, I can't wait for a town meeting discussion about electronic voting machines. We'll probably spend an hour on it. <laughs> Any questions? No. Well, I guess I wonder, will it eliminate the, the uh, use of the wooden box? I mean, will it change the whole voting system in Wakeman? Yes. Okay. We're going to vote on an on, on electronic tab, <laughs> like iPad kind of thing, or yeah. some sort of a machine. A machine. Like a machine type thing. I, I, I think the question is going to come down to, does town meeting approve it? or wait until it's mandated by the state, which it will inevitably be. Just not this year. Got it, okay. Yeah, in terms of urgency or need? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not being mandated now. Truck replacement savings, we can skip that. Just, I guess, just general thoughts about the the, the regional ones um, that I can pass on. 
Oh, those are so from the dock on, these are the regional names. Yeah, I see. Okay. So we're not evaluating. Okay. Uh, I, I can just let you know that the SCEMS requests uh, possibly can be covered by grants uh, that are being applied for. So the grant, grants or some other programs. So I'm confused. Do, does the CIPC need to concern itself with these items, or just if? Uh, so we don't have to prioritize them, um, right, no, but it's just no. if you want ask questions about them or have any yeah. meeting concerns. You're supposed to be reviewing them. See what we got. I mean, for tr anything at Tritown Beach, having been there, and I still find it a. Uh, it makes me sad. I mean, I mean, and I sort of asked with the swimming dock, like, where does this fit into some larger investment plan for either you know revitalizing it or or is it just basically a swimming dock for give the geese more places to sit? Oh, we're both <laughs> being honest. Yeah. And I guess. I'd like to know to help make it if I were evaluating it just like because I'd like to know a little bit more about Tritown Beach utilization in 2023. And I'm I'm on their Facebook page and it seemed very erratic. Yeah. I I think the priority on this may depend on what the Tritown Beach commissioners say to the finance committee when they come in mm -hmm. as far as a long-term plan. Yeah. That, they, you know, if there's no long term plan, I would say this would be a low priority. Yeah. If it's part, you know, a major part of a, you know, actual structured plan, then it gets, would get a higher priority. Okay, basically, this is a total price. It's not even divided up between the towns. Oh, I thought this was half. Is it? Yeah, I think it's yeah, half. Yeah, then it this up. is, I think this is half. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, the total is thirty thousand eight eighty eight. Yeah, or eight, and whatever eight sixty six. It's the Tri Town Beach, but we divided it in half between the two towns. <laughs> the Tri Tri Town name, I think, is just a legacy name. Okay. Yeah, Sunderland. Yeah, so, like, good. it's Sunderland dropped out years ago. Okay. Oh, that cold <laughs> They have their own place to keep their peace. They knew that where the geese would come. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, any questions, comments about the SCEMS items or the South County Senior Center for him? Is there anything of the things we've talked about that we need to actually look at? I haven't seen anything yet. Unless you want to go look at a barn. I understand <laughs> barn, so I'm all set. He's all set. Uh, when thermite starts in your foundation, then you'll know what fertility, <laughs> whether it's going to stand up or not. Okay. Ian, yeah, Ed. So, yeah, I don't think we need any other field trips. No. Yeah. Not to my knowledge. Well, what else is on the agenda? Let me just let me just cover quickly the future. There's a couple of future fiscal years years. Submissions here. Uh, right, what right. I wanted to talk about was, was the South County Senior Center. Um, the one that says uh, we need two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars in fiscal year twenty twenty five for a new facility. Um, and I put unlikely on the that it's super unlikely, but the issue remains that the South County Senior Center does not have a permanent home. Yeah. Uh, they're leasing space um, two separate places in in a. Uh, Deerfield. The one place in Sunderland, oh. and then they're using the, the, the church hall in Deerfield um, for programming. One of them is for their for their staff. Uh, there was talk about um, the Oxford University Press Building in Sunderland came on the market, um, and there was a uh, forum of activity and discussions about 
Well, couldn't tell someone by the building and half of the senior center and half of the completed town offices. Um, it, there's still this ongoing discussion, but municipal acquisitions are slow um, mm -hmm. and the real estate market moves faster than municipalities do. Um, so, but there's still sort of uh, a back burner discussion in some of about whether that makes sense or not. Um, but it, it still leaves us with the, the, the fact that there's a need um, with the three pounds that share the senior center. Mm -hmm. um, while this, obviously this isn't gonna happen this year, uh, but just something that, that we should keep in mind that there is gonna be a capital, mm -hmm. there is gonna be a capital in the future. I guess they can use the center school. Uh -huh. uh, so Keith submitted something for FY27. I can't find the title. Uh, oh, replace shingles on the salt jet. The 25 year shingles that are now 35, almost 35 years old. <laughs> That's FY27. But then obviously we have the, the, the mini splits, FY26. Right for the school. Um, it's still year 28. The Keith wasn't trying to put in on a plan to replace the uh, front loader. We also got the fire department 27 for turnout gear, which is that one's the mandate 10 year cycle. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was on the plan, right? That was on the existing plan. Um, the last new one was the fiscal year 32. The place of 2017 International Dome Truck with wow. those are all new additions to the group. So that is all that I have. Well, I mean, those things all it seems great that they're planning ahead. And we, we, like this committee, it's, it seems a little bit irrelevant. It's like, yeah, nice to know, but uh, yeah, yeah, those are budgetary. Planning issues. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to set a next meeting in a couple of weeks. We have time to gather the information. That's kind of about right. Yep. Yep. Any day is good for me. So whatever you guys decided. Yeah, I, I am pretty flexible too. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave it up to Brian. What's uh, flexible for you? So we're looking, I guess, around the week of the 29th. That'll be enough time to get answers to these questions. Yep. Yeah, that sounds good. So I I cannot do the 29th. I can't do the 29th. Uh, there's a select board meeting on the 30th. But that's at six. We could do something earlier if we wanted to just stick to a Tuesday. I don't think it'll take us too long to wrap up. I mean, we how could so we, we start earlier than five or is I could because on the 30th, Tuesday the 30th, I could start at four, for example. I could that I could do whatever. I'll be here. I'll be here all day. <laughs> Okay. Four o'clock will be fine for me. Four is good. Yeah, I can make four work. Four is fine. All right. Tuesday the 30th at four. January 30th? January 30th. <clears throat> All right. Uh, unanticipated items. Next meeting, we did that. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Make a motion we adjourn till January 3rd. Second. Second. All right. Can I do a roll call? Brian, I'm going to try to run over and be there for the select board meeting. All right. Since Drive my care. driveway was plowed out while we were on. <laughs> or so. plowed in. <laughs> yeah, don't run. All right. It sounds good. Okay. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you.